Hello everyone, Jacket in here. Welcome to Project Road Track Vehicle. Today, we're going to show you how one simple bolt can make your BRZ faster around the track. So here's a set bolt. This is purchased from Super for whopping 30 something dollar for here. What it does is replace the front upper bolt on your damper so you can have a little bit more camber on the front. From factory, those BRZ and GRD systems are notorious to have positive camber from the factory. But as we all know, a little bit negative camber usually helps in track performance. But today, we're going to put a number on it and see how much faster these two actually little bolts can make the car go. Well, thank you uh, myself at the track. But what are suspension cambers? Suspension cambers are wonderfully simple. They are just a vertical line of your tire versus the vertical line of your chassis, like we see here. A zero degree camber will effectively means your tire are perfectly straight up and in line with the vertical uh, line of your car. But when your car turns and leans in the corners, your tire leans with the car into the corner, so that way you actually lose a little bit of your contact patch when the car is leaning to the corner. Having some camber, especially negative camber, usually means that the top of your tire will point a little bit more inward into the car than the bottom of the tire, which means when your car is cornering and the car will be leaning, your outside tire will actually have better contact patch into the ground, which will generate a little bit better grip, so your car will corner a little bit better and faster. On our BRZ, there are two bolts that bolt the knuckle into the uh, suspension shock absorber to determine the front suspension geometry. But if we just replace the top, marked in red, we can effectively push the top of the knuckle inward, which will give your tire a little bit more camber. And that's exactly what we did. So on paper, this will make our BRZ go faster. But what about on track? Back to you, Jackie. But before any of that, we're gonna have to find out how fast this bone stop BRZ goes around this track first. Baseline testing done. I actually felt really good. The car turns into the corner really well, but in the middle of the corner, you can tell my hands are turned. I'm waiting to get back on throttle. I'm trying to get the front of the car to turn around. So uh, yeah, if we can just eliminate a little bit of mid-corner understeer, I think there's more lap time in it. Let's throw the car to Alex and see what he can do with it. Safety third. Coming out. Now it's going back in. Magic. And then we fucking try to tighten up, then we're good to go. So from whopping zero, two. Oh, minus one. You got one degree. It was zero. And now with one degrees of negative camber, how much difference will that make? Let's find out. Actually, um, surprised, surprised by how much negative one degrees of camber actually did for us in terms of mid corner grip, how much driver confidence I got out of that. Just one degree of camber. That was actually nuts. Um, felt great in the car. Let's, let's look at some lap times. All right, Alex. So with the baseline, no camber, the BRZ and me did a 41.9 which is pretty pathetically slow by, around, by the way, around Autobahn South. We won't talk about that. But felt all right. You know, you have a good amount of turn in, but by mid corner, the car start washing a little bit. I'm struggling to get back on throttle. It's a bleeding time in the mid corner. Camera bolt went on. Okay. I did a 40.74, which represents so a, a 1.16 improvement. 
for like 30 bucks. For 30, 30 bucks and 80 cents. That's impressive. That's a lot more than I was expecting. What was, your, what was your expectation? I was like half a second. Half a second. I think, okay. I can, I can say, I think there was maybe three tenths in the car in the time that was from me just improving, you know, getting used to the car and so on and so forth. So we take away three tenths. Yeah. So it's still like around an eight tenth improvement. I think in the actual corners, there was around like half a second because the mid corner, I could just carry more speed. But the byproduct by carrying more speed, I get to carry more speed onto the straights. I get to go, go back on throttle earlier. So I, I end up on the start of the straights faster than I would be without the camber. So the, so, the, so the gain actually multiplies all the way down the street too. Yeah. So I think that, once you factor in all that, it does make sense. It does make sense. But for like 30 bucks. But for 30 bucks. That's crazy. One degree is a camber. Like I said, over they a second. Yeah, they should have just gave you those from, from the factory. They really should have. And that's a, basically a 100 second track. So it's 1% for 30 bucks. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. It's not even out to market. They're straight from Subaru. Straight from Subaru. All right, very cool. Anyway, so that's the test for today. If you want to stick around, we're going to do a little bit more uh, video and deep data deep dive after this. But what well, are we testing next time? I have no, I have no idea. Put, comment well, what, you would like, what you guys would like to see us test next time. And uh, back to the studio. <laughs> now we're back in the lab and we're going to analyze the two laps that we did. And uh, very critically, I did find the car was quite a lot nicer to drive. But let's talk about it. And uh, one of the first things, details, as we're rolling on to the start of the lap, is turn one, I could get on power quite a lot better, right around mid-corner after braking. After turn in, the front of the car just felt like it bite yeah. quite a bit harder right here, and I could yeah. get on throttle earlier. Yeah. And that led to, as I'm screaming in joy, uh, led on to a better exit, especially into this turn three. So three you see the car just rotates so much better into the, in the transition. Yeah. Yep. Both cars did rotate quite a bit, but it just felt a little bit more confidence. Turn four as well, right here, I had a little bit more confidence in the car. In this, obviously, I was a little bit messy. No, let's, not, let's gloss over that. Uh, uh, one of the bits I want to highlight especially is this double apexer coming up right here in the middle of the corner right after I downshift and turn in I felt so much more front end turning grip yeah. and I could get on the throttle so much harder as you can see on the other side on the other before there was a little bit of extra scrubbing going on a, and a little bit less steering angle overall like every phase of the corner yep yep and critically as we'll see later in the data analysis as well it's not one big area that it is a chunk of time it's a little bit everywhere so this section, I actually didn't pick up that much, even though mechanically speaking, I really should have. That's on me, that's the driver thing. Uh, but critically, that last corner, because the car rotated with a little bit more camber, I could get on the throttle so much heavier on the exit, and that actually led to a 10th gain across the entire yeah, straight. You're kinda, when you're turning, your wheel kind of opens up a little bit earlier, yep. which yep. Com you can commit to throttle slightly quicker. Yep. And uh, the last corner, the final yeah. corner coming up, also double apex, you watch, just watch the steering input. I'm gonna pause it right around yeah. here. Right here. Yeah. You see how the steering wheel just starts to unwind? Because at, at this moment, I feel the back end, back end of the car just yeah, coming around. Yeah, the car's around. like tipping, tipped in. And then Very the gently, yeah. but it, just, just, it just helped me point the nose towards the exit of the corner. Yeah. Whereas on the other side, even if we can go another oh, half a second in. Yeah, you're still cranked. It's, it's not yeah, it's really, still cranked. yeah, exactly. It's not really unwinding. And then I'm having to kind of force through this whole, you know, fronts pushing, grinding. It's, it's just causing a lot of understeer. And that's not really how I like to drive. This is a lot more how I like to drive. So yeah, it, it's a combination of having, adding a little more front grip, but leading to ultimately more driver confidence. And that gets you a little bit more corner speed everywhere. How much corner speed? Let's take a look at the data. Now we have the data pulled up and uh, the red line is the 140.7 that we did with, with camber. And the blue line is the pre-camber, which was a 141.9. Quite a few interesting spots right away that you'll notice. Turn, yeah. turn one, a little bit more minimum speed. It was about a mile or two, slightly more over here. Yeah. And that led to actually right here, turn yeah. three. So turn one minimum speed was 1.3 miles an 1. hour. 1.3 miles an hour. 1.3 miles an hour. But right here. The little correction on the That's turn three. Is, uh, yeah. That's, that's the transition from the left to the right. Yeah. Because the car had a little more camber, I had a little bit more confidence just to roll it in and trust the car. So yeah. the lift there was nowhere near as drastic. Yeah. Then effectively from, effectively, so effectively from here to here, it kind of, just that little dip, kind of growth and to yep, it amplified. Amplified to like 
a quarter of a second. Yep. Yeah. So across the first Just section. Just that little flick. And actually, if you look very gently right here, I actually braked a little bit earlier and yep. very, very slightly heavier on my fastest lap, which means I lost a little bit on the entry, but gained it yep. right back in the mid corner and onwards over yeah. here. So by the so, time I like between one and two, you're actually about even. About right even. Yeah. You gain it back, yeah. but by here, because I just, I got the car turned in and on power so much yeah. better yeah. for turn three. Yeah. It, it, it basically- Three to four essential. is massive. Yeah. yeah that, this this is massive, yeah. right? So turn four and five, some of these high speed corners, the gap is actually kind of drastic. Yeah. I think there is a chunk of this is down to driver confidence. It's not necessarily all car. But you see like on the solar lab, you didn't really get on full throttle into here, yeah. right? Get on, or get on throttle, right? But with the camera, because the car rotates so much better, you're kind of on throttle like half a second quicker, or like a tenth or At so least quicker. A, a little yeah. bit earlier. A little bit a little earlier. earlier because you're, you're to throttle. on throttle here yep. versus you're on throttle here, yep. right? And that's just I overslowed. <laughs> this you have, I have no excuse for that. I think I just overslowed on right. the forty-one nine lap slightly. So, so so the guy went to take off another. Maybe, but like I said, like I said, like, like, I, said, like I said in the when we were at the track, I, yeah. I think there was a little bit more time in, in either of the laps. Yeah. But uh, the whole point is to see, given a very set circumstances, how quickly the driver can get used to the car, right? So either both of these cars got uh, both of these setups got three laps each. That's how we kind of went about that. So uh, over in the double apex. This one, I actually screwed up slightly on my fastest lap. I overslowed very slightly. Uh, so that costed us actually not that much time because I was able to get back on throttle so much harder that it carried a little bit more extra speed going down the back straight. So in the end, that, that overall- That corner section is actually about even. Yeah, that, yeah. This, this section ended up being about even. Yeah. Uh, the, like I talked about in the lower speed corners, the three lower speed corners, relatively little difference. It's still about a tenth everywhere, yeah. overall through Very here. Very slightly, yeah. But the big pickup, and you can't really tell this on data really specifically, this is that little final left-hander where you have to lift, get the car rotated, and go. I could get on throttle, as you can see with the red line picking up earlier, I could get on throttle earlier, full throttle power earlier because the car was rotating better, and that carried to another tenth that we gained all the way down the straight. Which is critical. Which, so, yeah. So it, even though you, you can see it's not a crazy pickup right here, but that multiplies down the straight because I could get on power earlier. So critically, it's all about how soon. And then in a lower power car, uh, uh, car like this, it's full all throttle about time. Full, full throttle, throttle time. as early as possible. Yeah. Um, Braking is about the same. Braking is slight, it breaks slightly later with yeah. the higher camber lap yeah. and then slightly higher minimum speed. It's actually exactly the same on like the full minimum speed, 40.9. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Again, slightly better exit, just with a little bit more mid corner grip. Yeah. And this final corner is final actually corner, where the rotation, the minimum the speed difference. Yeah, minimum speed difference is about what three miles an hour. Yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty wild. We yeah. got back on full throttle base at about the same time, so it didn't lose anything going down the front straight again. But this corner again was about a ten. So overall, there is not one. Even though there may be like huge looking gaps right yeah. here, it's. They all even up to about a tenth, a tenth game every corner, every everywhere, and it's about ten corners. So that got us basically to our one point two seconds. So it's pretty interesting to be able to dig dig into data a little bit like this. Um, yeah. Even even if you take away the uh, small driver mistake, probably here it's still probably almost a second. I think difference. I think this and this pretty much evened out because you know I, uh, I missed a little bit right here. You, yeah, it actually almost even. It basically yeah. about evened out. Yeah. So. Um, we'd be probably looking at a 40.5 versus a 11, like a 41.5. So I think there was for sure about a one second gap. Yeah. And the most interesting bit for me is the average speed of the lap is basically 0.8 miles difference. So with camber, we gain 0.8 miles per average, hour yeah. of average speed. That's pretty nice. So like I said, about a mile an hour more yeah. everywhere in the yeah. corners, min speed wise. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anyway, that should be it for this data deep dive yeah hope if you, you like this uh, segment if you like it definitely let us know we'll do more of it if you don't if you, nobody know watches well. it then we will bye know. well no <laughs> all right thank you so much for watching and what, what are we doing next time alex i don't know we'll have to figure something we'll out we'll find out see you all next time see you next time on project rtv faster around the track well what am i supposed to do again <laughs> you fucker <laughs> Come on, man! So